Okay, I hope everyone is doing good. I'm doing good on my side and we are group one members. Okay, so the presentation is predicated on one single person, Lawrence Stenhouse, the process model. Okay, the process model has got about five pillars of uh, focus. Okay, the first pillar point is the starting point should not be objectives. The second pillar point is constitute worthwhile knowledge. The third point is rules and procedures of worthwhile knowledge to expose to learners. Activities have their own standard of excellence eminent in them and not outside of them. Last but not least is assessment and evaluations are guided um, by the known standards and not by of content and not by the expected laid down. Each and every point has got a has its own implications, so please bear with us as we do the presentation for you. All right. So this is our particular gentleman, as you can see him, and his name is okay. His name is Lawrence Stenhouse. Okay. So Lawrence Stenhouse was born in 1926, and he was born in this particular place, East Avenue. Uh, cited by the cited uh, this information is Elliot and Norris, 2011. Okay. Right, now let's get to the straight point. Let's get to the point. He developed the curriculum process model opposing Ralph Tyler. Ralph Tyler is the pioneer of the objective model. Okay, so Lawrence and Alps came up with an entire idea that was in opposition to Ralph Tyler, the process model. Okay, Stenhouse believed that in the adaptability and flexibility of the curriculum to ensure that ability to acknowledge to acknowledge the changing needs and attentiveness of both the learners and the teachers so stenhouse was of the point that curriculum should be very versatile should allow the teacher and the learner to be able to maneuver around the learning content without infringing on the ability to attain the knowledge that is prescribed so now Let's unfold this beautiful model, the process model. Stenhouse proposes that instead of de depending on knowledge, we should rather depend on how the knowledge is concerned. So the process model is not really about what needs to be attained, but how we attain the knowledge at the end of the day. And we, we do not necessarily have the pre-specific pre knowledge on what to be attained. Okay, so we ask ourselves two generalist questions when we deal with the process model. The second part, the, the first part is the what. What shall they learn? The knowledge that needs to be learned, the concept, the topic, and how shall they learn it? Not what at the end of the lesson should have been learned. Okay, so these two questions, these two questions uh, for form the generalist question that constitute the, to the following uh, idea, the curriculum process. Okay, so the curriculum process will lead us to what standards and levels have been reached so at the end of the day once we are done with what they shall learn and how they shall learn that becomes our curriculum process not necessarily what needs to be attained at the end of the particular lesson we will then assess what have been reached what were the learners able to gain out of that concept all right okay because we press for time i'm going to try to speed it up a bit Okay, so the starting point should not be objectives. Okay, should not be objectives. So Stenhouse was in opposition of that. Okay, let's, let's just change the pen because we can. All right, uh, let's change the color. We go to green. Okay, so Stenhouse at first, the objectives may be encapsulated by content, by the content. However, Stenhouse was or has and explicitly dismiss this he was off the point that objectives should not be the starting point we should have what we need to know but it should not be the reason why we start our lesson we should not predicate our lesson based on objectives okay and he further stated that teachers who state goals in the le in their lesson are unable to reach them in knowledgeable classroom which is obviously as a teacher with the two years experience i have seen that most of my lesson most of my objectives are Somehow seldomly met. Or attained. Okay, so in continuation, so we do not pre specify knowledge. We do not have a specific knowledge. We do not have specific objectives as this model states. And we should just have the process. The process must unfold as it unfolds. We should just facilitate the process of learning. Okay. Right, the starting point should not be objective as it continues 
this is the point that we love the most, which we love the most. Stenhouse considered that classrooms are the laboratory. We all know that in the lab, this is where we do our experiments. This is where we learn the most. This is where we, we interact with the world. We interact with our imagination. Okay. So the implication of this topic, objective not being the starting point, what does this imply to the South African curriculum practice? The first part is the teacher involvement in the curriculum creation. This means that teachers have to be involved and it will make teachers be involved in the curriculum implementation as the teachers will know what needs to be taught and how it needs to be taught, not necessarily what needs to be gained as you teach the particular concept. Number two is nurturing of learner-centered learning. This will teach the, we, we, we've got to move from a point of teacher-centered methods to more learner-centered methods now. This will somehow promote the learner-centered methods, okay? This will allow teachers to be researchers because they will have to go search on how to, you know, classroom management, when you're when you're no longer speaking with the learners, what are the learners going to learn? How are they going to learn? The facilitation processes that come as, you are busy facilitating the environment of learning and teaching. All right, let's rush the process. Now, what constitutes the worthwhile? Now we've gotten to the point number two, worthwhile knowledge. What is this worthwhile knowledge, one person may ask? This is knowledge that is important for one to acquire and essential for them and their immediate environment. Okay, this may differ from a person to person. I, for one, I would not necessarily like to know about lifeboats and, you know, fishing because I do not necessarily live near any environment where I can do fishing. But if I have to go hunting, then, of course, that's more relevant to me. Okay, so, okay, this is worthwhile knowledge. The fundamental, the foundational principle of the process model involves openness. Okay, this model wants you to be a very critical thinker. You must be open to learning environment. You must be open to all the other. That means all five, all five, what you call these things, which I call it, all five senses of a person must be alert at that moment. Okay, so what constitutes worthwhile knowledge is already known. This can be somehow in this particular format that you as a person, you know what you need to know. You know the ways you, if I give you a concept out of that concept, you know exactly that this information is relevant to me. You know what's relevant to you as a person. Okay, what constitutes worthwhile knowledge is already known implication in South African curriculum. Okay, so this particular individual, Paisoli came in Trauma Lark. Paisoli 2018 mentioned that if knowledge is implemented in South Africa, if worthwhile knowledge is implemented in South Africa, then educators must, ask, must understand how they teach and choose um, certain concepts, right? Teachers must be able to choose concepts wisely. This might actually have a very, very negative implication, but then uh, as teachers are getting trained, they will actually implement this and it can turn out to be a very, very well established process. Teachers should choose topics that are very, very, very uh, age appropriate and very much dependent uh, developmental stages linked, right? They must be entwined with the developmental stages. They must allow, you cannot teach a grade 11 learner what they should have learned in grade one. That's what this actually means. Right, rules and procedures and concepts of worthwhile knowledge to expose to learners. Okay, let's change the color pen. Um, we go red again because red is much more appealing. Rules and procedures and concepts of worthwhile knowledge to expose to learners. According to Stenhouse, okay, this is our pioneer, 19 something, uh, knowledge is organized in structures that involves criteria. Right, so number one, we need to know exactly what we need to know. Knowledge, the specific concept, but then it needs to follow a specific pattern. It needs to follow a specific process, okay? Right, uh, this individual in 2000, page 452, mentioned that education knowledge is content is governed by different discipline, disciplines. And all these disciplines give birth to subdisciplines and they develop within their right. So each and everything that we have has got a specific rule that follows it. You cannot just jump into somebody else's house and expect your own rules to apply. Stenhouse argued that learners are expected to analyze the play done by William in English literature. Learners might be limited to specific outcomes because of the set of objectives that are centered. Right. Because of this, learner, this objective model, learners have pre-specified knowledge and they might not necessarily stretch their minds to thinking even more about the concept. 
Okay, so where do we go from here? The implications of rules and procedures of worthwhile knowledge. What does this imply? This using the model in South Africa will enable the creation of disciplinary knowledge. Learners will need to, will now be exposed to law. They will know how to follow specific procedures. This is besides what they learned in the school, but this allows them to branch off to other aspects of life. The implication is that teachers might encounter challenges. Teachers might have challenges, but challenges can be in, can be you know eradicated, and whether learners have mastered what they need to be taught. Right, because we do not have necessarily a clear objective, we do not necessarily need to check this one. Stenner House created the process model to develop justification for education. Okay, so we go to this continues. The selection of knowledge for curriculum principles and procedures enable the selection of knowledge without putting more emphasis on the behavior that has to be depicted by, by learners. Straightforward. Right, activities have their own standard of excellence, eminent in them and not outside of them. All right, now how, what does this mean? Stenhouse argued that classroom activities consist of their, their quality excellence, of their quality excellence, which was eminent within them and not outside of them. So each and every activity should have a specific standard for it so that we know that if learner has, was able to attain this particular activity well enough, that this learner has somehow reached a specific level of excellence. These standards indicate whether learners are able to do their mathematical algorithms or not. All right. Okay. We know that this one is a challenge for most of us, even as teachers. Classroom activities should be selected according to a matter of importance based on societal and professional de demands. What does this imply for educational context? Learners would have to choose what to learn and how to learn. Okay. Number one. This is a problem. The criteria used to measure the learner's capabilities will differ as there will be no specified outcomes. That is the other, other implication. The curriculum will have to be refurbished and school activities will have to change to accommodate every learning process. When it comes to assessment, Stenhouse model implies that a teacher is a critic, not a marker. Focus is Focus must be placed on knowledge, judgment, and comprehension, and assessment must aim to evaluate the learner's capabilities to work. Not necessarily what was to be learned, but what actually was learned during the learning process. These were the implications thereafter. Stenhouse proposed that curriculum development should be an ongoing process. We, because of the changing times, everything must change. Nothing should stay stagnant because if it stays stagnant, the cur if curriculum stays stagnant, we cannot apply what was relevant in 2010 to apply now to 2023. Things have changed. Right. Stenhouse contains that an objective examination removes the ability to disclose the quality of good teaching and learning. Learners might not necessarily learn and might not be very creative because they are only told to learn this thing that's specified. Anything else besides that is besides the point and it's not necessary. All right. What does this implicate? What does this implicate? Uh, how does this implicate the South African curriculum, the assessment and evaluation guided by known standard of content? What is this? How does this implicate the South African curriculum? Here are the following implications. Models, okay, Stenhouse model centers around the intellectual development and cognitive abilities. So that means we're going to have very intellectual uh, people out there because these people will be able to take out information and information that's literally not prescribed. They're able to extract or attract information from the given scenarios. All right. Uh, where do we go from? Now to conclude, Laurie Stenhouse curriculum design model represents a major shift in the curriculum studies. Yes, I do agree because this is an, an we need to change the whole entire curriculum. Challenging traditional approaches that rely heavily on predetermined goals. We doing away with all the predetermined information and we change into new era. This student-centered approach creates an engaging and meaningful learning experience. That means even our environment has to change even our teaching environment has to change as well 
This approach promotes, prom promotes, pardon me, promotes a holistic view of student achievement and places its focal point on the promotion of continuous improvement in teaching and learning practice. Okay. Designing an active learning-centered curriculum should be guided by what, not how, by what and the how part. All right. Any questions? If you have any questions, ladies and gentlemen, you may ask and I will be able to answer the questions if you follow on my WhatsApp number. Thank you. So the reference